A viewer says the UK is seen as a hub for biotech research and innovation, but the listed market is seen, is seen as essentially just the NASDAQ. Do you think that could change, um, or will we just see the odd lonely IPO, such as Oxford Nanopore? I don't know who wants to... Well, maybe I can take that. So, um, uh, a few things to say. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to dispel the myth that it takes a listing in the US to, to be a successful company. <laughs> so, um, out of 23 companies in the past uh, uh, 10 years that have raised over 100 million, um, so out of 23 that have gone to the US, six have already delisted, 14 are trading down, and only four are trading up. And that's not just true about the UK companies going to the US, but it's true in general about international investment propositions that have a hard time sometimes uh, communicating with US investors. And the second myth I want to dispel is this myth about that there is a liquidity differential between the UK and the US. And here there needs to be kind of a responsible research into what constitutes liquidity because in, in the UK, a much bigger proportion gets traded over the counter, and, and uh, uh, so 38% versus 2% in the US. And when we pick up the liquidity indicators from Bloomberg terminals, we don't pick up this combined liquidity, as well as uh, often commentators tend to look at the index liquidity, whereas uh, the US companies tend to be larger. And so the only relevant statistic for liquidity is the percentage of the free flow that an issuer can expect to be traded in a day. So that's one thing. But as the exchange, we do a lot of work to avail access to capital to growing companies. So, uh, so our, it's our aspiration to be eventually agnostic to whether the company is public or private to be able to service uh, their capital needs. So we have announced uh, the launch of our intermittent trading venue that uh, should be ready by the end of next year. And it will allow private companies to remain private, but still access new investors uh, uh, during the windows of intermittent liquidity and, uh, by publishing periodic disclosure uh, and uh, still remain uh, private. But then, you know, the early employees and early angel investors will uh, be will have the window to potentially exit and new investors can step in. And so that that is our aspiration as the exchange. Uh, to service the wider array of uh, companies and indeed entrepreneurs. And, and how maybe do you just one more thing, because you're right. This, the, you know, the, mm. the, the 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 person who answered the question. There's lots of really exciting research happening in the UK and other parts of the world, and and we need that. You know, and, and, and I think COVID and mRNA has really kickstarted that. Um, we have some great listed healthcare companies. They are the best scout for finding some really interesting companies that they can pull in and help commercialize these some great, either a different technology for a treatment or, or um, you know, maybe a, a specific molecule that they need. And you find them inside listed companies. So, mm. you know, if, if you know, you could look at some of the uh, listed pharma companies in the UK as, as it's a bit of a biotech venture capital. This is sort of all the early line. So you can access that. Um, and it's particularly with the interest rates this high, it's probably slightly safer, I think. Is that, I suppose, a slightly less punchy way to focus on that theme? Perhaps kind of lower risk, lower reward, because you're you're doing it within the mixture of, you know, a big pharma company. Hundred mm. percent. So it depends on your risk profile, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also your patients, uh, because it, because it will take a long time to 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 come. But that, that's the same for some smaller listed biotech companies that you need to be patient. Uh, but there, you're right. With the share price, will be quite tough. <laughs> mm. um, so it's it, it it's always a trade off. I think you know if if you want higher return, you need to get higher risk. Yeah, and I suppose you do have the kind of healthcare and biotech trusts listed in the UK as well that have different approaches when it comes to their exposure to uh, racier parts of that market or kind of safer parts of that market as well. Yeah, term it. There's, there's sort of a, a, a scale, if you like, a mm. risk scale where you, yeah. where you, you know, purely listed on your own on one hand and then part of a big conglomerate. And yeah, it depends where you want mm. to be or maybe a bit of everything.